In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Good afternoon to you all. You're very welcome this afternoon to the Basilica of Our Lady, Queen of Ireland. I'm welcoming you here to the Sunday Mass that we have, fourth Sunday in ordinary time. Welcome all of you here present and those of you joining us across the world online. We welcome those of you as well joining us on EWTN platform. So we come together as God's family today as united in prayer and in uh, prayer and in thought for one another, but united in worship of the Lord. So in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done or what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of he heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor. Clothe the man you, seem to, you see to be naked, and turn not from your own kin. Then will your light shine like the dawn, and your wound be quickly healed over. Your integrity will go before you, and the glory of the Lord behind you. Cry, and the Lord will answer. Call, and he will say, I am here. If you do away with the oak, the clenched fist, the wicked word, if you give your bread to the hungry, and relief to the oppressed, your light will rise in the darkness, and your shadows become like noon. The word of the Lord. i 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers, it was not with any show of oratory or philosophy, but simply to tell you what God had guaranteed. During my stay with you, the only knowledge I claimed to have was about Jesus, and only about him as the crucified Christ. Far from relying on any power of my own, I came among you in great fear and trembling, and in my speeches and sermons that I gave, there were none of the arguments that belonged to philosophy, only a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. And I did this so that your faith should not depend on human philosophy, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing and can only be thrown out to be trampled underfoot by people. You are the light of the world. A a city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand, where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the sight of people, so that seeing your good works, they may give praise to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. The importance of light in our lives can't be underestimated. You know, the dark days of winter are punctured by various different festivals, but most notably, of course, Christmas. We celebrate the birth of the Christ child. But we have lights everywhere. Houses are lit up, trees are lit up, candles in the window to signifying the welcome to the, uh, symbolically to the, to the Holy Family. Uh, it brightens up the darkness that we know that we've been enduring for a number of months. And then we come into the summertime, the the evenings are brightening, the mornings are getting brighter, there's a length in the day, and it makes us a little bit happier, lightens our mood, gets us kind of uh, uh, in the thought of springtime and into summer. Even today, a beautiful day, the light coming streaming in through the windows there. So light is important. And when Jesus, uh, when the, the gospel refers to light no more than the first reading. Light is stressed in terms of the background. The exiles in the first reading, they have a complaint against God. Why should we fast if you never see it? Or do penance if you never notice? They're giving out to God. The prophet then tells them, genuine fasting is related not only to God, but also to their neighbor. Their fasting should include sharing of food with the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and clothing the naked. And when do they do these things? When they, when they do these things, then your light will shine like the dawn and your wound be quickly healed over. That theme is carried through the gospel as Jesus continues to instruct his disciples. And discipleship is not only about right relationship with God, but also about right relationship with those around us. It's not a personal privilege. It's for the benefit of others and the glory of the Father. If the disciples stop witnessing, then they become like flat salt, tasteless, good for nothing. 
So Jesus compliments his followers by calling them the light of the world. He is confident that his disciples will have something which is worth sowing to share with the people. Light is not a privilege for the few. It's not for hiding or hoarding. That's the point that he's making about you don't put a lamp under a tub. It's there for everybody in the house. So when we as Christian disciples, we ourselves, we here today at this particular point in this basilica, in Knock, at this particular time, share our light when we go outside and return to our homes with others, we're giving witness. That's the witness of our lives. That witness can puzzle others into wonder. Paul VI, St. Paul VI, made the point eloquently when he said in Evangelization in the Modern World, and it's, it's an interesting quote. He said, through this wordless witness, these Christians can stir up irresistible questions in the hearts of those who see how they live. Why are they like this? Why do they live in this way? What or who is it that inspires them? Why are they here in our midst? Such a witness is already a silent proclamation of the good news and a very powerful and effective one. Here we have an initial act of evangelization. You can even take that in a practical level today. Pope Francis is in South Sudan, and he's there with the Methodist moderator and Archbishop Welby of the Church of England, the Anglican Communion, all three, and they're praying for peace, and they're trying to get politicians to understand you can't just keep fighting one another, and at some point you're going to have to lay down the guns and start talking and create some semblance of a civilized society. Will anything happen? I don't know. Will anything happen? Will they do that? Will they speak? Will they talk? Eventually they will. We thought it for years ourselves about the North. Eventually the guns have to be silent for talk to take place. But what's the point? The point is that even when they come back from South Sudan, they don't know whether what they have said or the impact of that on the country will be effective, but it's a witness. It's a witness. It's a seed. They're showing light in darkness. It's a practical engagement with the society around them. You don't know, and we can't know, how transformative that will be. And so, you puzzle others into wonder. That's the start of witnessing. We can do it ourselves in small ways, by how we live, how we interact, how we share, and how we communicate. Sometimes we can preach by saying nothing. Amen. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we offer our prayers and intentions now this afternoon for our needs. Called, we are called to be salt for the earth and a light to the world. And we pray now for the courage and enthusiasm to joyfully answer that call. We pray that the church on the synodal pathway may radiate Christ's message of God's love and care for all of humanity, especially those who are most vulnerable. Lord, hear us. We pray for the mission uh, to South Sudan and for peace in the in troubled parts of the world there, and of course in, in Ukraine and indeed in other difficult areas and places where there is war. We pray that darkness will be dispersed by the light of Christ and the hope of faith and the loving care of those around them. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
human beings may be true stewards. We pray that human beings may be true stewards of this earth and as creatures, showing love and respect for these gifts from God. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick and those who are suffering in any way, mind, body, or spirit. We always pray for perhaps those of you who are ill and who are here present in the Basilica, those of you at home who may be due to your illnesses, confine you to your homes, nursing homes, hospitals and hospices, all of you who join us on, online today. We pray for that the Lord may be with you, grant you his consoling and his healing help. Lord, hear us. We all come to knock with a particular prayer and intention, whatever it may be, maybe a worry, a care, an anxiety, and indeed a thanksgiving. So let's pause now for a moment. We remember all our prayers and present them before our Heavenly Father. We also remember all the petitions that have been sent in here to us as well and pray for those who've asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. And finally, we pray for the faithful departed and all who've died. Remember in particular William or Bill Byrne, formerly of Lispatrick, whose month's mind occurs at this time. Pray for his family at this time as well as they continue to remember him in their thoughts and prayers. We pray for that all the souls of the faithful departed may repose in peace and enjoy the rewards of their labours on earth. Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, hear the prayers of your people who cry out to you in their need. May those who follow your Son shine like stars in the darkness of the world, and that you may be praised and given glory always. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, we have our offertory collection, and as always, this collection goes towards the upkeep of the shrine and the provision of all the facilities we have here at Knock. Your generosity at this time, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. We stand for the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. standing or kneel for the consecration. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we've brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Francis our Archbishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and we remember William or Bill Byrne, Liz Patrick, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. With a simple gesture now, we turn to one another and offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
For those of you now joining us online, we invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are there already and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For those of you here in the Basilica, myself and ministers of the Eucharist will come amongst you. As we do so, we'd ask you to stand and to receive on your hands. If there's somebody present that just wishes to receive a blessing, please indicate as such by crossing your arms in front of you. If there's somebody present with celiac condition, we have celiac hosts with us. And finally, for those of you who wish to receive on your tongues, you can do so at the back of the sanctuary here.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. We offer a prayer to Mary as we say it together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Knock, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist, let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that, made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before the final blessing, just to thank you all for being with us this afternoon here in the Basilica, and uh, also those of you online, thank you very much indeed. You can continue to send in your petitions to us on our website, knockshrine.ie, and we incorporate them in all our Masses here in the Basilica and the Old Church. You can also light your candles on our website, knockshrine.ie, and then we light them at the Shrine for you. Those of you here present can do exactly the same thing, although you'll have to visit the candelabrum yourself. So it's over there at the, uh, at the Old Church. And just uh, on behalf of all of us, from all of us to all of you, we pray God keep you all well and keep you all safe. And we give our traditional wave across the globe to everybody joining us online. And thank you for waving back, and yourselves as well too. There we are. So now I'll bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you. And just to bring to your attention, next Saturday is the 11th of February, and World Day of the Sick. And anointing will take place at anointing of the sick will take place at the 12 noon, 3 p.m. and 7. 30 p.m. Masses that day. Your prayers are requested for the repose of the souls of Imelda Duggan of Mayo Abbey, sister of the late Eileen Keane of Ruski, Jimmy Keeley, Jerry, Jack Holton, late of Longwood County Meath, brother of Sister Miriam in the Carmelite Convent, Joe Gardner Kilala, brother-in-law of Tom Coleman of Shanbahra, who died during the week, uh, Val Nelson of Turnure in Dublin, member of Cordillera for many, many years, uh, we remember Val very, very fondly. Val was a, a great knock man, if you might call him that. A wonderful individual, great devotion, and uh, uh, wonderful dedication to the courtier. And also, finally, of uh, young Martin Murphy, whose remains are lying in his home and uh, uh, from 4 to 7 this evening, and also Requiem Mass tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in the parish church. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So now, bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you. Almighty Father, bless these medals and religious objects, and may your saving presence be with those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed. And I bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God.